What's going on everybody? It's Scott from Get Off The Couch Designs and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I use Total Boat's Penetrating Epoxy by making a walnut sign here. I'm going to go ahead and get the walnut cut to a rough length here. I like to run two passes on the miter saw just for a nice smooth cut. And then once we have our two pieces cut, we'll move over and get them glued up. Before the glue up, I was able to run the boards over the jointer quick to get a nice even seam. Then I'm going to go ahead and use some tight bond to dark and some Bessie parallel clamps and glue this panel up. With the panel all glued up, we can then move over to the CNC and get our void cut out for the inlay. All right, so what I really wanted to talk about was Total Boat Penetrating Epoxy. I use it on pretty much every one of my hardwood epoxy projects, and it's saved me many times. Before I found Total Boat Penetrating Epoxy, I threw away, let's just say a few projects. As with all epoxies, there is a mix ratio, and this here uses a two to one mix ratio two parts resin to one part hardener. As you can see, Total Bolt makes it super easy with their metered pumps. When mixing up the penetrating epoxy, you can see it's thin and almost water-like, but this lower viscosity helps allow for a better coverage. This better coverage and lower viscosity helps the penetrating epoxy get into the pores of the wood and give it a proper seal. This in turn prevents the colors of the epoxy from bleeding through to the grains of the woods. You can consider this a seal coat. I found penetrating epoxy to be especially important when using a lighter color wood like a maple or an open grain such as an ash or an oak, but it never hurts with walnut either. I like to pick up these cheap little dollar store brushes, get like three or four of them in a pack for a dollar, and they're nice to spread out the epoxy and then you can just toss them out after because once you use them, the epoxy will cure and they become obsolete. When coating a large flat surface, it's a lot easier just to pour it and then spread it all out. But what I like to do then is come back with a clean brush, wipe out as much epoxy as I can get, and then go through my voids and give it a clean brush. That way it'll get out all of the extra penetrating epoxy. It's not 100% necessary to brush it all out like this, but I find it really helps. Especially with the small thin lettering, because sometimes the epoxy will cure and you can see a thin layer of the epoxy around it. But this brushing here helps prevent that. Next up, I just mixed up some Total Boat 2 to 1 epoxy and I'm adding that to all the voids. I added some white mix all pigment to that so it really pops out. Once all the epoxy is cured, then I can go ahead and clean it all up. I like to run it through the drum sander. Uh, quite easy this way, but if you don't have a drum sander, you can also use a regular hand sander as well. Once it's run through the drum sander and most of the excess epoxy is cleaned up, then we can go ahead and use the random orbit sander and work our way up through the grits. We'll start at 80 or 120 depending on what was on the drum sander and work up to 220. Once that's complete, then we'll go ahead and add a keyhole to the back and then finish it off with some Odie's oil.